Hey, today we're going to be looking at a JK flip-flop. JK flip-flop is a digital component that has an awful lot of uses, but we're going to look at a specific use for it today, and that's being used in a ripple counter. This is the component that we're going to use to simulate. It's a 74LS76D JK flip-flop. It has five inputs, preset, J, clock, K, and clear. Three of those inputs, the ones with the little circle around them, are active low inputs. Active low means, in the case of clear, that in order to stop this JK flip-flop operating, if we were to pull clear down to a logic low, i.e. ground, it would stop operating. If we tie it high, it disables that input. The same for preset here. The JK flip-flop also has two outputs, Q and not Q. And the output we're going to be looking at is Q. I have a truth table here, a simplified one at the top and a function one at the bottom. The bit we're interested in is when both J and K are tied to a logic 1 or power. As we see here, I have J and K tied to power. Under this circumstance, the output will toggle. Toggle means change state, but it will only change state on the when it receives a clock input here. Because this is an active low or a falling edge device, the output, the JK output, Q, only changes state on the falling edge of a clock input. So if you look at where I've got the cursor now, the top waveform here is the clock. When its edge falls, the output of the JK flip-flop changes state from a 0 to a 1, and then it remains at a 1 until it receives the next falling edge here. And then it toggles, changes state, until the next falling edge and the next falling edge. And what it's done is it's divided the input by two. That's why these counters are known, often known, as divide by two counters. The function table tells us that this operation cannot happen if preset and clear are not tied to high. So in order to get the JK flip-flop to toggle, we must tie both preset and clear to high. I've got a simulation set up here. We've just looked at the single JK flip-flop and what its waveform would look like, its output waveform. And you will note that it divided the input by two. So the output was effectively twice as long. Here we've got four JK flip-flops set up exactly the same as this flip-flop, except for the clocking signal for each JK flip-flop comes from its preceding component. So, the second one in the chain gets its clock signal from the first one, the third from the second, and the fourth from the third. What this means is that in a divide by two counter, each successive JK flip-flop will produce a waveform, an output waveform, that is twice as long as the preceding counter. 4 bit means that we can count up from 0 to 15 in decimal. Let's do a simulation and have a look and see what we get. So I'm going to start the sim. I'm going to go into the grapher, which is the easiest way to show it. I'm going to maximize the grapher and we're just going to take a little bit of the waveform there and just maximize that up. At the top here we've got the clock signal. This would be the least significant bit or the first JK flip-flop here. And then we have them in a line until we come to the last one here at the bottom. The first part of the count starts when all of the flip-flops are off. And then the next one, 
zero 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 one zero 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 one the first JK flip-flop turns on and then the second one turns on then the first and second and when you follow the waveform through you see it goes all the way up to where they're all switched on at the same time it's not actually shown in here but here it is here this part here when they're all switched on at the same time and then it resets and it keeps going through that count sequence into infinity. In this final slide we see the the major problem with the ripple counter and the, the major problem you're going to encounter with this type of counter is something called propagation delay time. Now the simulation shows the ideal falling edge where we get a straight vertical line from top to bottom or from bottom to top. The straight vertical line indicates that no time has elapsed when for the for the system to change state or to switch. But in reality no system is capable of switching in zero time. A real falling edge, this one here, would when we look at it on a scope and we zoom in far enough would look like a slope. The amount of time it takes for the system to switch. And that's known as the, sw the switching time, the propagation delay time. Essentially, we could, in theory, link as many JK flip-flops flip -flop together in a counter uh, and form a, a counter of infinite size. The problem is that each counter that we introduce into the chain introduces its own propagation delay time. And these times, these propagation delay times add up which severely restricts how fast um, a large counter could work. So, so essentially this type of counter would only be used in, um, in systems that don't operate at any great speed. There is a way of, um, of dealing with this and it's known as a synchronous counter and I'll cover that in a later video. But that's all you need to know in terms of just developing a simple ripple counter um, n bit ripple counter, you can have as many counters as you like as long as you know that you are uh, restricted by the propagation delay time here. Propagation delay for this type of flip flop is given as 20 nanoseconds, which isn't a lot, obviously, but the more counters that you introduce into the system, that compounds and becomes greater and greater. Okay, that's it.